Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's Patrick Reval in London, and I'll have the latest on the passing of Queen Elizabeth and the commemorations here coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are starting at 75 degrees, but things are going to heat up. Here's the good news. It is Friday. Good morning. Friday, September 9th. Yes, it is good news. Happy Friday. Uh, I didn't see rain, but I know some people did yesterday a little bit. Yeah, I missed out as well. I know there were a few storms, but they were very, very, very widely scattered yesterday. Yeah, let's go ahead and check in with Mike. So Same you didn't today. either. I, no, I didn't get any in my house the day before, yes. Uh, but, you know, as I was uh, put on the, the push alert today, that it's the same weather pattern, but at least it does include a small chance for, you know, a couple of showers here and there. So if you happen to be one of the fortunate ones, because a lot of folks are not going to be seeing rain today, as was the case yesterday. We do actually have a couple of showers uh, still showing up well down to the uh, southwest going down 35. There's a couple of them down there right around uh, just to the east of Teresa Springs, Catula and a few decent downpours as well. That is continuing though to slide down to the south and should it is sort of building right now, but that like I said, will move down to the south and then continue to uh, die down later on this morning. Temperature right now stands at 76, so we are warmer right now in town than what we were yesterday, but already down in the mid 60s in portions of the hill country, about mid 70s elsewhere aside from the hill country. Once again, we've got just a whole grocery list full of allergens out there. Mold is on the moderate side. There is also an ozone action day today. So if uh, you know, put off filling up your tank until later on this evening or early in the morning would help out. And this morning we are going to have 74 degrees, partly cloudy skies, other than those couple of leftover showers way down there to the uh, the southwest. And then later on this afternoon, 95. We had 94 yesterday, so we're still going to be on the above normal side, partly cloudy. And again, one or two of those showers around here. I think we may still keep a shower or two in the forecast tomorrow, but still we'll keep mid 90s in the forecast as well. And then subtle changes going into next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Two people were airlifted to San Antonio hospitals following a shooting at a park in Uvalde yesterday. This morning, four people are in custody. Now, this comes just days after students returned to class in Uvalde CISD. The Uvalde mayor says the shooting is believed to be gang related. And according to Uvalde police, the shooting call came in at 5.30 p.m. yesterday afternoon. Police say the victims are all juveniles. Mayor Don McLaughlin says the gangs involved have been going back and forth for several months. He also spoke to the concern of the community as it tries to heal from the Robb Elementary shooting. Everybody's going to be on pins and needles, but like I said, we've got plenty of DPS officers at these schools, local officers. I know the, I know the trust is not there, but, but we will be there. We, we, we will not let this community down again. The Uvalde Together Resiliency Center was also temporarily evacuated due to this shooting. We want to remind people there is a 24-7 hotline for those who may need counseling or other resources. We have all that information on our website at kset.com. Taking a live look outside Buckingham Palace this morning, where it is now 1033 in London. The royal succession underway in Great Britain as the world mourns the death of Queen Elizabeth II at the age of 96. People in the UK are waking up to a new monarch for the first time in 70 years. The Queen's son is now King Charles III. He is returning to London from Scotland today to observe 10 days of mourning and begin a series of events years in the making. ABC's Patrick Reville has more. This morning, King Charles is preparing to address the United Kingdom. His first public speech to his subjects since the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth. The King expected to return to London today as the country goes into mourning. So far, issuing a short statement calling this a moment of greatest sadness. The bells at Windsor Castle and St. Paul's Cathedral to toll around noon today. Then a 96-gun salute at Hyde Park, one round for each year of the Queen's life. The first of extraordinary commemorations being launched under an elaborate plan called Operation London Bridge. Charles expected to be formally proclaimed King Charles III at St. James's Palace within 24 hours. His wife Camilla will acquire the title Queen Consort. Thoughts and prayers of all of us will be with Her Majesty the Queen. All parliamentary activity will be suspended for 10 days for a period of mourning. Crowds have been gathering outside Buckingham Palace since the royal family announced the Queen's death. Shocked. I can't believe it. I'm gutted. Absolutely gutted. 
The announcement, as is tradition, posted on this modest placard on the gates, saying the Queen passed away peacefully at Balmoral Castle in Scotland. There, a steady stream of cars carrying members of the royal family, including Princes William and Harry. After the Queen's coffin travels to London, her body will lie in state at Westminster Hall for three days, allowing the public to pay their respects around the clock. The state funeral will then take place ten days after her death at Westminster Abbey. Quite shocking, really. You, you kind of always knew it was coming, but, you, but when it happens, it's just sad. Queen Elizabeth was last seen in public Tuesday, swearing in her new Prime Minister, Liz Truss. Reacting yesterday, Truss hailed the Queen as the rock of modern Britain. Our country has grown and flourished under her reign. Britain is the great country it is today because of her. The Queen's death is still sinking in for people here in the UK. She was such a constant in British culture. King Charles is now expected to address the nation later today in a pre-recorded message. Patrick Reval, ABC News, London. Back here in the U.S., the federal grand jury investigating the Capitol riots is turning its attention to former President Trump's Save America Political Action Committee. The Justice Department is trying to find out if the Trump campaign broke the law by raising money by falsely claiming the election was stolen. While Trump and his allies collected $250 million from false election fraud claims, most of the money reportedly went to the Save America PAC. DOJ is saying the money was not spent on election-related litigation as promised and that funds were misused. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is stressing his country will never abandon the nuclear weapons and missiles it needs to counter hostilities from the United States. Now, he accuses the U.S. of pushing a pressure campaign aimed at weakening the North's defenses and eventually collapsing his government. State media says that North Korea's rubber stamp parliament also passed a law that requires North Korea's military to automatically execute nuclear strikes against enemy forces if its leadership comes under attack. 437, 74 degrees. And it's a big weekend for coming up for the San Antonio Spurs legend Manu Ginobili as he gets ready for his induction into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. Big weekend for Manu and Spurs fans everywhere. Let's check traffic right now. 35 is always busy. We've got a few vehicles out there, include lots of uh, truckers at 37, uh, I-35. There's I-37 at Hackberry and 281 at Hildebrand. And I know some people got a few showers yesterday. I just got overcast skies, which was a nice little break. But today, though, we're looking to the sun. It's going to be kind of a hot weekend. We'll be right back. Spurs fans smiling all weekend long. Our coverage continues of Manu Ginobili's induction into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Official duties don't begin until later today, but the induction ceremonies are set for tomorrow night. Uh, what a night it will be for Manu, his wife, Mani, and their three sons, Dante, Nico, and Luca, as he is given the most prestigious award in all of pro basketball. In fact, the boys will present Manu with his Hall of Fame jacket tonight. He already has a display at the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame near the Admiral David Robinson, a little-known player from Argentina who was a second-round pick in 1999, spent three seasons overseas before moving to San Antonio, where he became a smash hit. Ginobili was asked what it was like to be the forefather of now the stream of international players who suit up in the NBA. It, it was a, a span, I would say, five to ten years in which everything changed when we started to see international players in number one in the draft or top ten consistently. And all of a sudden, in those five years, 20 to 25 percent of the rosters were made, built with, with international players. So, yeah, I'm proud of being part of that generation that changed the way the game was played, the game was perceived, uh, the international players were recognized. Um, so it was, it was fun to be part of that. Mano will be a part of a press conference with his other classmates of 2022 today, including, including former Spurs player George Carl, who's going in to the hall for his coaching legacy. Our coverage from Springfield, Massachusetts continues tonight. Week three of... That's kind of cool. Week three of big game coverage underway. Judson Independent School District kicked off its Operation Dog Tags. Golden Knights U.S. Army parachuting team dropping in on Rutledge Stadium last night to present the colors. Wagner hosting San Marcos first quarter, second play of the game. Pitch goes to T-Birds 1A. 
Taylor, and he's in the program listed as an athlete. You get to see why as he breaks down the sideline on the 40 yard touchdown run. Wagner gets by San Marcos 42 to 41. Randolph Rohawk cheerleaders had a lot to cheer for. They were up 17 nothing in the third when uh, we arrive at SAISD Sports Complex. Randolph showing no sign slowing down. Quarterback Colin Stuckey flop buys time, then fires to Gabe Gonzalez, gets to the Rohawks inside the uh, 20 yard line. A few plays later, it's quarterback sneak for Stuckey, and they take a 24 0 lead. The final from Sports Complex. Randolph wins 45 to nothing. Dak Prescott had to leave practice early yesterday just before their season opener against Tampa Bay. That's after the quarterback tweaked his surgically repaired ankle while he was trying out some new cleats. Prescott tells us it's nothing to worry about. He'll be ready to go Sunday night against Tampa Bay. Honestly, I feel great. Uh, something may come up uh, in the report, but uh, <laughs> as you know, that's this league. And if you don't report a hangnail, you'll get suspended or you'll or they'll get fined. Excuse me. So. Um, but no, I feel great. Uh, I still feel the best th uh, that I felt in a very, very long time. Not even comparable to where I was last year going into this game. So I'm uh, honestly just excited, ready, ready for uh, Sunday to get there. Kickoff between Dallas and Tampa Bay is 7:20 Sunday night. The season officially kicked off last night with a lights out showing by the Buffalo Bills. They beat the defending Super Bowl champion L.A. Rams. And a lot of people will be watching on Sunday. Yes, well. they will. Time now, 4:44. And 74 degrees for now. Staying hydrated while on the go. Up next, picking the best reusable water bottle that fits your needs. And next, first look at the road ahead for King Charles III as he becomes monarch following the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. In this morning's GMA first look, King Charles III. As the Queen entered her 90s, Charles stepped up his official duties. By 2016, he attended 530 engagements at home and abroad in one year alone. And even to him, in public, Queen Elizabeth II was still your majesty. But watch her face as she celebrated her 92nd birthday. Your majesty, mommy. The new king, who is also the longest serving heir, has been working toward this moment since the age of three when his mother became queen. And as Charles enters his next chapter, a new era for the monarchy and its line of succession. And coming up at 7 a.m., Good Morning America is live from the United Kingdom with Robin Roberts and David Muir at Buckingham Palace as the world celebrates the enduring legacy of Queen Elizabeth II. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 447 reusable water bottles help plastics out of landfills and keep them out and help you stay hydrated. 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris shows us which one's top consumer reports test. Water bottles are a handy way to hydrate for adults and kids on the go. So you press this down and then you put it up and then start drinking. To help you find a good reusable water bottle, Consumer Reports tested more than a dozen. We looked at a lot of different bottles and a lot of different key factors, like whether a bottle leaked, how easy it was to clean and tote it around, and how it handles drops and falls. The easiest to clean go right in the dishwasher or don't have parts with hard to reach areas. Take this camel back for kids. It's completely leak and spill proof thanks to a straw piece that does not detach, but that piece is a little more challenging to clean. If that's a deal breaker, this budget friendly Contigo Trekker strikes a balance between kid friendly and easy to clean. Need durability? Testers say these Yeti Ramblers are nearly indestructible, keep drinks cold for more than 36 hours, and are super easy to clean. The Yeti is a pretty solid and heavy water bottle, so if you've got smaller kids or you want something that's really easy to tote around or like take to the gym, you might want to consider something lighter. For example, this Hydroflax, it weighs less than a pound and it keeps your water pretty cold. It also fits perfectly into most cup holders. The wide mouth with straw lid is $40. If ice cold water isn't priority, you can save some money with this sun-dried water bottle. It has a silicone mouthpiece that's easy to use and easy to clean. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. A quick look outside with Transguide this morning, looking there at I-37 at Carolina and Loop 410 at Fredericksburg. Things are moving right now. Mike's got a cool picture. We had some very widely scattered showers in the area again yesterday, and that narrow column of rainfall is called? 
Just rain shaft right there. And like uh, Mr. McClellan says, I guess this was our 10%. Yep. I mean, it's just <laughs> kind of few and far between. That's what it was day before yesterday, yesterday and today, maybe even tomorrow. So at least a couple of folks will get uh, some of this rain. Clouds moved in fairly quickly in the afternoon, but once again, despite that, we still made it up to uh, 94 yesterday and uh, football forecast tonight. It's going to be a good looking night for football one or two. I mean, you know, a stray shower or storm. Odds are you're not going to see anything, but just to kind of keep that in the back of your mind there. With some of those leftovers 90 at kickoff, 85 at halftime. Sun goes down just about quarter of eight. We've got a couple of clouds hanging around here now this morning and uh, the 12 hour forecast. We're going to be dropping down to 74 and again. Partly cloudy skies, uh, maybe a couple of extra clouds here and there. We'll warm up very quickly once the sun does come up. 87 already, 11, 89 at noon. Then we get the 10% chance for a couple of showers and thunderstorms. 95 again for a high temperature, so we'll still be roughly 3 degrees, 3, 4 degrees above normal. So here's the uh, computer model as of right now. And as you saw, it, I'm going to go back here very, very quickly. And you can see how it initializes with a couple of these showers that are down here to the uh, south and west which are starting to die down a little bit. Then we see somewhat of a lull in the action. Then later on this afternoon, we still have this northerly flow in the atmosphere. So that's what's taking these little disturbances, throwing them on through here. They're not widespread rain producers. Uh, it could have a you know slightly decent downpour here or there if you do happen to get one of these showers. But they'll be uh, just kind of counting them on one hand, basically, like that picture showed. There's the 10% chance of rain that'll go into the early evening hours. Now this model wants to scare up one or two showers early tomorrow morning. A little bit uh, questionable about that, but also and I'm kind of going with the 10% uh, chance of rain again tomorrow because computer models have been very consistent with showing that in the afternoons. And so there will still be one or two of them out there, but still mostly sunny skies around the area tomorrow. And then after that, as of right now, it looks like we are going to be getting out of the rain chance by Sunday and then just staying on the hot and sunny side. So. 89 at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature today up to 95. One or two of those showers out there will have some of those clouds moving on in. But again, despite that, we'll still be getting up there on the warm side of things with some humidity. Now, the one change, which is not shown on the map right here, but we will start to see a little bit lower humidity. Notice how the low temperatures will be down just a couple of notches. So and it's going to be a bit more comfortable in the afternoon. There is a weak front that's going to try and lie in the area. Don't get excited about the word front. Not any, not, it's not gangbusters or anything like that. But again, it's just going to trim some of the humidity in the afternoons going into next week. We're still going to be on the hot side. I mean, still look at that 95s all across the board. Yeah, forecast is definitely on repeat right now, isn't it? Yeah, yep. I guess we're getting a little spoiled with all the little breaks we were getting yeah. in August. But again, at least the past couple of days and today, tomorrow, the repeat does include a shower or two mm -hmm. for okay. one or two folks. Maybe we'll see that today. Thank you, Mike. 453, 74 degrees. And we are getting a first look at the new Pinocchio that arrived on Disney Plus yesterday. Five till actors react to the death of Queen Elizabeth, plus a new Pinocchio has arrived on Disney Plus. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. The entertainment world, mourning the death of Queen Elizabeth II. Dame Helen Mirren played the monarch in the 2006 movie The Queen. She posted on Instagram, quote, We mourn a woman who, with or without the crown, was the epitome of nobility. Elton John writes that the Queen was an inspiring presence to be around, and she led the country through some of its greatest and darkest moments with grace, decency, and a genuine caring warmth. And Rolling Stones frontman Mick Jagger says he remembers watching her wedding and watching her grow from a beautiful young lady to the much-beloved grandmother of the nation. The Netflix series The Crown, currently filming season 5, show creator Peter Morgan tells Deadline he expects they will stop filming out of respect, adding that the show is a love letter to the Queen. There's a new Pinocchio in town. Benjamin Evan Ainsworth plays the puppet who becomes a boy in the new Disney Plus movie, telling me he didn't want to change up the voice too much. So I spent a lot of time going over the 1940s original, watching the movie and listening to Dickie Jones as Pinocchio because that is like the iconic voice. And I thought it was very important to um, keep it as faithful as I could. But I want to be real. But he says he also put a little bit of his own energy in there. The film also stars Tom Hanks as Geppetto. Pinocchio is out now on Disney+. Plus. Disney is the parent company of ABC News. And happy birthday, Adam Sandler. The actor and comedian is 56 today. 
while four-time Oscar nominee Michelle Williams is 42. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now, 457 and 74 degrees for now. President Biden leading the U.S. in its response to remember Queen Elizabeth. What the president said in response to the Queen's passing. Plus, just ahead in Tech Bites, Uber Eats is looking to start robot delivery in Texas. Checking the roads with Transguide at 457, 281 at Jones Maltzberger. A few folks are headed home. We're getting a jump start on the Friday, the end of the work week. We'll check in with Stephen coming up. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, tributes from across the U.S. are pouring in to honor the late Queen Elizabeth, how President Biden is honoring her legacy. Made it to Friday outside with live cam this morning. Not a bad morning out there right now, 74 degrees, and we're hoping some drier air starts to work its way into South Texas. Mike is standing by with more, and then we'll talk to Stephen with an update on traffic. Hi, Mike. We see you waving over there. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is September the 9th. That's right. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Mike's excited that it's Friday as well. I believe. Oh, yes. Yes. Always nice. Going to be a good looking weekend. Going to be on the hot side this weekend. And a couple of folks saw a shower again yesterday, like the day before. And uh, that's going to be the situation once again today. So here's what it looks like outside right now. We are at 75 degrees. Dew point stands at 70. So there's not a, a ton of humidity out there, not much of a breeze, and that's causing a bit of an issue or going to cause a bit of an issue uh, later on today. As far as radar, we do have a couple of uh, showers down, no uh, thunderstorms, no uh, lightning is being detected down here to the uh, southwest of us, but that is uh, continuing to sort of die down a little bit. These were dumping rain at the rate of about five, six inches per hour just roughly a half an hour ago. A couple of them right there in uh, Zavala County, which are also dying down. And again, this looks very impressive. And there you can see it was really coming down pretty hard and heavy. And now this is sort of, uh, even though the aerial coverage is growing slightly, the intensity is dying down somewhat. And those will continue to work their way down to the south. So at least folks down there, down 35, are getting a little bit of uh, some rain this morning. 71 in Lotus. We are one of the warm spots here out at the airport, Randolph, as well as Stinson, and then some mid 60s in portions of the hill country. As I was talking about with no wind right now and other than in and around the any showers that pop up or a thunderstorm it's going to be fairly tranquil as far as the wind today and so that's what's prompting an ozone action day all around the metropolitan area and going up the i-35 corridor into austin so nice the nice pleasant morning some clouds hanging around here and then we'll have partly cloudy skies hot and again a couple of showers once again that 10 percent chance for rain most everybody is not going to be seeing anything tomorrow once again mostly sunny hot couple of showers here and there then going into Sunday and next week pretty much looking like taking any sort of a small chance of rain out of the picture and it's just going to stay very sunny and very hot details in just a couple of minutes traffic authority good morning Stephen anything on this Friday yet you know I've been checking the trans guide cameras out Mike and thankfully as we start this new uh, Friday and we're getting ready to walk off our drive off into the weekend no major issues reported just yet 1604 Kitty Hawk you can see a few folks out there this morning but 281 at St. Mary's is actually pretty quiet right now so if you drive through the area right now you're in luck but other places is like US 90. We know we tend to see traffic already picking up. That's the usual story for these, these uh, streets early in the morning. But uh, other areas, of course, we can always expect a little bit of a slowdown. We know that there's going to be active construction taking place a little bit later on today, and some is actually wrapping up right now. But it looks like it's been essentially as we take you to the map, there's nothing else to show you out there. Just a lot of those active construction zones and a lot of quiet roads this morning. So again, great time to head out. Take an opportunity of this uh, if you are an early bird commuter. But if you also are traveling into the Alamo City from any of these communities. Still pretty green across the board. 29 minutes. It's a pleasant drive from I-37 North down heading in from Pleasanton about half an hour on Highway 90 eastbound traveling in from Castroville and that arrival from Lytle should be about 17 minutes on I-35 northbound. So no need to rush if you are heading out the door in the next few minutes, but we take it back to Transguide at 410 at Fredericksburg. Things are off to a quiet start, so that means we're going to talk road closures coming up a little bit later on. Mark Stuff. Thank you, Stephen. This morning, four suspects are in custody following gunfire at Uvalde Memorial Park. As Jonathan Cotto reports, it happened around 5.30 p.m. yesterday, just two miles from Robb Elementary. 
Mark, Stephanie, we know two people are in the hospital right now. Their condition is still unknown, but we do know they were conscious when they were airlifted to a hospital here in San Antonio. The victims include a 22 year old and a juvenile. Now, police say the four people involved in the shooting arrived at a Uvalde hospital seeking medical attention. All of them are being questioned. Their names, ages and possible charges haven't been released. We know police responded to 401 East Main Street. This is Uvalde Memorial Park, not too far from Robb Elementary School around 5.30 p.m. Authorities alerting the community that this was not a dangerous situation for the general public. The Texas Department of Public Safety says it is assisting the Uvalde Police Department along with the Sheriff's Office in the shooting investigation. We know the shooting comes as the community is still attempting to heal and very much on edge after the May 24th massacre at Robb Elementary that left 19 students and two teachers dead. Mark Stephanie, as we can imagine the stress this is causing for the community in Uvalde, especially the families directly affected by the tragedy that took place a little over three months ago. Now we know parents sending their students back to school just on Tuesday. Police are saying anyone with any information on this incident is urged to send any photos or videos of that scene to the Uvalde Police Department or you can send a direct message on its Facebook reporting. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. School counselors will be available at New Braunfels ISD campuses this morning as students at the high school return to campus following a school lockdown. Now, the high school was placed on a lockdown yesterday after police say they got a tip that there was a gun on campus. The district did not did take the threat did not take the threat lightly. Students were cleared from classrooms with their hands raised as officers cleared the entire school. Even the South Texas Blood Bank flew in blood to nearby hospitals in preparation for an, any potential emergency. Parents were relieved to know their kids were safe, but also happy with the response. I think this is going to be the new normal, so we're, I mean, we weren't complaining if they kept your kids safe. I just don't think we should be scared to come to school every day. Like, just be afraid to not come back home. The investigation here is ongoing to find out who made that call. Right now, it is just past 11 a.m. in London. You are looking live outside Buckingham Palace. Queen Elizabeth II's legacy honored across the world and around the United States this morning. Political leaders, rock stars, even Britons living here in America, remembering the Queen's historic legacy. ABC's Jay O'Brien has the latest from Washington. This morning, the United States mourning the death of the United Kingdom's beloved monarch, Queen Elizabeth II. In Washington, flags ordered to half staff at the White House and Capitol. President Joe Biden Thursday signing a condolence book at the British Embassy, celebrating what he called the Queen's enduring strength and her life of public service. Later, addressing her passing at a Democratic Party reception. The thoughts and prayers of the American people are with the people of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth in their grief. Leaders from both political parties celebrating the Queen's legacy. Former President Trump saying she will always be remembered for her faithfulness to her country and her unwavering devotion to her fellow countrymen and women. Former President Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama writing the Queen meant a great deal to us. We were struck by her warmth, the way she put people at ease. Brits across the U.S. describing a feeling of grief. She's somebody to look up to. It's a huge loss when do you feel the connection. And Beatles legend Paul McCartney also tweeting, God bless Queen Elizabeth II. Elton John saying the Queen has been a huge part of my life from childhood to this day, and I will miss her dearly. The Queen will have a state funeral in London. A date for that is expected to be announced soon. It's expected heads of state from across the globe will attend. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. It's now 508, 74 degrees. And still ahead, Google introduces new features for Android. We're going to tell you about the upgrades for phones, tablets, and Chromebooks. Outside with live cam, we'll get a weekend forecast coming up. Don't forget to take a moment on Sunday to remember the victims of the 9-11 attacks. 512, a convenience store with a rodent problem and a popular fried chicken chain in need of a cleaning. Location scored in the 80s but had serious health issues. Tim Gerber takes us behind the kitchen door.
Express Mart number two, located in the 1900 block of Southwest 19th Street, got an 80 on their recent health inspection. The ice machine had a black mold-like debris buildup. There was no hand washing sink because it had been removed. The inspector told the establishment to immediately stop selling pickles and bagging ice on site until the sink was reinstalled. Another sink had dark mold-like debris and several flies buzzing around it. Rodent droppings were observed inside a walk-in cooler. The inspector ordered the business to clean up the droppings, remove damaged bags, and provide access to a locked back room. A reinspection was ordered. Aradero, a Mexican restaurant in the 5800 block of South Flores, earned an 82. The inspector didn't see any employees there wash their hands during the inspection. One employee was observed grabbing cooked bacon and placing it on a plate without washing hands or using gloves. A metal rack used to store clean plates was soiled with dust and rust. Seven violations were corrected during the inspection, but a reinspection was still ordered because several certifications needed to be obtained or renewed. The church's fried chicken at the corner of Culebra and Galm earned an 84. Packages of raw chicken were being improperly thawed in a standing bin of water. The inspector watched an employee change tasks, remove dirty gloves, and put on clean gloves without washing their hands. Vent filters over the fryers were coated with excessive accumulations of grease and food debris. Employees had no idea when those filters were last changed. There was also a lot of trash and food debris throughout the business that needed to be cleaned up. A reinspection was ordered. That's what's behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. It's now 514 on your Friday morning. Coming up next, we're going to tell you about a new deal that allows Uber Eats to do robot food delivery right here in Texas. You go by lots of titles. Veteran, son, dad. It's time to get up. No. Hairstylist and cheerleader. So adding a student title might feel overwhelming. But what if a school could be there for all of you? Career, family, finances, and mental health. It's coming along. Well, it can. National University. Supporting the whole you. Liz, you nerd. Cough if you're in here. I didn't use an XTM for my phlegmy cough. What about Rob's dry cough? Works on that, too, and lasts 12 hours. 12 hours? Who studies that long? Musinex DM relieves wet and dry coughs. The number one brand doctors trust. Is dad posting a farewell to his favorite college freshman? Nope. He's switching his choice cashback category to gas. The road to college can be emotional, but also rewarding. With the Bank of America customized cash rewards card, you just can't stop getting rewarded. In today's Tech Bytes, Google is making it easier to share photos and videos across devices. It's upgrading its nearby share feature, which is similar to Apple's AirDrop. The self-share mode will let you automatically transfer files. And YouTube has launched a video player for education apps. It comes without ads, external links, or recommendations. The goal is to avoid distractions for viewers. For now, it's only open to select partners, including Google Classroom. Finally, Uber Eats has teamed up with autonomous driving startup Neuro. The deal will bring robot food delivery to California and Texas. The Neuro vehicle can travel up to 45 miles per hour and carry 500 pounds. They will begin making deliveries in Houston and the Bay Area this fall. Think about it. Even though it's a computer robot making the delivery, you'll still be paying for your bite in cash. Cash. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Did I miss something? <laughs> Oh, 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 cash. Oh, like And he cash. said it twice. <laughs> Just to make I think sure. he knew there was going to be a tough yeah. sell today. All right, Sorry. moving on from Andrew Dimber. Thank yeah. you, Andrew. Let's go ahead and check in with Steven. <laughs> well, we're not seeing any of those out on the roadways just yet. I think he said Houston in the Bay Area. But here in San Antonio, thankfully, the roads are going to be pretty quiet right now. We're not seeing any robotic cars out there, but we are seeing a few drivers this early in the morning. You can see right behind me, 410 at Fredericksburg. There at McCullough, it tends to pick up a little bit more than other spots but thankfully we're not seeing anything that's going to slow drivers down just yet. But let's take you
sticky to the map because what we are seeing lots of active construction taking place in and around the Alamo City. We really want to bring your attention to what's taking place here on the northeast side of San Antonio Loop 1604. If you've driven through it, you've likely seen this barrier work take place. We still have about one more night to go of this. It started on Tuesday, September 6, and according to the tech side, we'll see the end of that portion to wrap up on Saturday, September 10th from 10 in the evening to 5 in the morning. So plan your commute ahead of time. Alternating lane closures on Loop 1604 eastbound from Nacogdoches Road to I-35 is what drivers can expect during those hours. But if you want to know what you what is happening over the weekend, you can grab those phones now. Open your camera app, scan that QR code. That'll take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. Has a list of all the closures happening in and around the Alamo City. So plan your commute ahead of time. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Very good. Oh, that's pretty. I know. Yeah. Beautiful flower. And the hibiscus loves the rain. Hopefully your hibiscus have gotten a little bit of rain the past couple of days. There's another chance today, another chance tomorrow, albeit very, very small. So don't get your hopes too high to see any showers. Right now, it's a pretty tranquil morning. We've got a couple of clouds hanging around here, and we still have a few of these showers down here to the southwest. And notice how, well, right there in Zavala County, these are almost dying out. And then this little batch right here, at one point, it was really starting to come down pretty hard and heavy as this loops back on through right there. That was uh, rainfall rates of about five, six inches per hour. Now that's starting to die down, even though it is kind of growing in aerial coverage. It's not as intense rain and it is at least moving, so it's not just sitting in one spot. So we'll still continue to see some of those showers continue to uh, work their way down in toward Laredo over the course of uh, the next, uh, say, hour or so, and then those will continue to uh, die down. 94 yesterday did get really hot in Hondo up to 100. 95 Pleasanton, and 98 in New Braunfels, and you could really tell where there were some clouds and weren't some clouds. We did hit 94 right to about three o'clock in the afternoon. There were a couple of holes because, you know, those clouds started to move in fairly quickly with some of those that 10% chance of some rain. But then there was plenty of sunshine around New Braunfels as well as Hondo. And that's going to be the situation again today. Temperatures forecast to be well up into the mid 90s around here. 97 in Catula and mid 90s all around the metropolitan area. Again, you get the clouds moving in here a little bit quickly, a little more quickly. It's not going to get as hot, obviously. We'll bottom out at 74 this morning and then with a mixture of sunshine and clouds. And once that sun really starts to uh, get higher in the sky, it's going to warm things up very quickly. 87 to 11, 89 at noon, and we'll top off 95 later on today. And then here's that 10% chance for one or two of those showers out there. Very few and far between which is what the computer model is indicating. Just a couple of scattered ones here and there. You know, you could have a decent downpour. I wouldn't, you know, wouldn't bank on it at all. Hopefully the hibiscus gets a little bit of watering. And then tomorrow, this model has a couple of showers in the morning. Mm, I don't know if I'm buying into that yet, but then just a few more scattered about uh, out there by the afternoon. Very quickly, um, what was Danielle is basically nothing more. There's Hurricane Earl. It's continuing to work its way off to the northeast. It did affect Bermuda. A couple of more spots off to the uh, uh, off to the east in the eastern Atlantic Ocean, but they're really not going to be doing much of anything. Maybe a 30, 40 percent chance that one could develop over the next couple of days. 89 at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 95. Again, a couple of showers here and there. Otherwise, very almost stagnant air, so that's what's prompting an ozone action day around the metropolitan area going up 35 in toward Austin. 95 again tomorrow, a stray shower or two, and it's going to stay hot all the way through next week. Slightly drier air will come in here Monday, first and next week, Monday, Tuesday. So a little more pleasant in the mornings, but well above normal high temperatures. Back to summer <laughs> for a little bit. Basically, yeah. yeah. I mean, those are almost summertime normal high temperatures. Okay. Thank you, yeah. Mike. Mm -hmm. 523, 74 degrees on your Friday. And next in your morning spotlight, a first look at Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery, plus ovations for Blonde and the Sun at the Venice Film Fest. This morning, there's lots of movie news to get you ready for your weekend. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Lock the doors. Stay in your rooms. Everyone is in danger. The first teaser trailer is out for Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. Daniel Craig and writer-director Ryan Johnson are joined by an all-new cast of suspects and potential victims. All right. When's the murder mystery start? We don't know. Netflix just says this holiday season. Here. Please. 
Please come. Don't abandon me. She's coming. The standing ovations keep coming at the Venice Film Festival. Blonde, a fictionalized look at Marilyn Monroe, reportedly received a 14-minute ovation, one of the longest of this year's festival, bringing the film's star, Ana de Armas, to tears. And the screening of The Sun ended with a 10-minute standing O, reportedly leaving its star, Hugh Jackman, visibly moved. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, 74 degrees. And still ahead, we're going to take a look at the tributes to Queen Elizabeth that continue to pour in from around the world this morning. And if you get sick this fall, how can you tell if it's COVID, the flu, or just a cold? We'll show you how to know the difference. And ahead on GMSA at 6, if you had just one or two extra hours a week, how would you spend it? We're going to take a look at the return to volunteerism and how you can find your best fit. San Antonio police are investigating the death of a man overnight. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you what led up to his death and how many people were involved. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting kind of mild in the 70s for now, but things will heat up to the 90s once again. Good morning to you. It's Friday, the 9th of September. Happy Friday. We hope you had a wonderful week and enjoyed some rain at least one of these days, right? Yeah, exactly. Mike is here with a look at the uh, Friday and the weekend forecast. When does that drier air start to move in, Mike? By the first of the next week. And it's not going to be just this, this bone dry air, but, you know, we've been keeping those, the humidity around in the afternoon, a little and very noticeable, I should say, when you step out in the afternoon. So that will change somewhat next week. But uh, this is not going to be any sort of a giant fall cold for anything like that. Don't get your hopes up for that in any stretch. 75 degrees right now, 2.70. So not bad as far as the humidity for the, the morning and the wind is calm. That's going to be somewhat of an issue later on today. Not a huge issue. I'm explaining in just a moment. First of all, we do have a couple of uh, showers there from uh, well, just to the east of Crystal City and everything is sliding down to the south. And as you can see, that's pretty much about it as of right now. These have been dumping some pretty good rain, especially this batch right here. And at one point it was dumping rain at the rate of about five close to six inches per hour. It is starting to, as you can see, not the intense dark shades of red on there. So it is easing up somewhat, continuing to move down to the south. So at least it's not sitting in one spot. That's when you run into problems there. But if you go down 35, you are going to run into some of those showers. And it does look like uh, that they're going to continue to sort of uh, fizzle out in about the next hour or so. But at least some folks are getting a little bit of rain this morning, and some folks will get a little bit of rain this afternoon. 75 here in town, a low mid 70s around much of the area. Then we do have some mid 60s, 66 Bernie Stage Comfort, Balverde right now. You're at 68 degrees. And and when I was talking about the uh, air being calm right now, no wind, that will be other than in and around any showers or thunderstorm or two. You don't get that. We all have the ozone action day in effect all around the metropolitan area and then going up I-35 in toward Austin. As far as this morning, some clouds hanging around here. Otherwise, a again, kind of a nice morning. Partly cloudy this afternoon, hot, mid-90s, couple of showers here and there. Again, don't get your hopes up for rain. Mostly sunny, hot. Don't get your hopes up, but one or two folks will see a shower tomorrow. And then after that, it looks like it's just pretty much going to be mostly sunny and hot. Temperatures will be what the kind of midsummer averages are right around mid 90s and yeah hopefully a little bit more drier air coming on in here details in just a couple of moments traffic authority anything big yet sir well the roads are cool mike That's right good. now they're a perfect time to head out take advantage of it because really there's not a lot to show you out there there's 37 at hackberry so pretty quiet what we really have seen a lot from these trans guys are some pavement and of course a few folks out there getting their early morning started but you could see there 37 at carolina uh, just a few more people making their way into the Alamo City. However, just watch out because of course we talked about the active construction that continues to take place, but we're going to continue to bring that information to you as long as the morning commute does stay pretty quiet. But right now the travel time to San Antonio is not looking bad at all. Actually, that journey from Bernie on I 10 is about 24 minutes in the eastbound lanes right now. No need to hurry if you're coming in from Bolverde. We're back in the green there 281 southbound. We can expect 27 minutes at this hour and not too awful if you're coming in from New Braunfels on I 30 35 southbound will take about 25 minutes at this point, but taking it back to trans guy 35 at New Braunfels there doesn't look too bad. And as I mentioned, we will talk about some road closures to be on the lookout for, especially as we drive off into the weekend. Mark stuff. 
Thank you, Stephen. Natalie, breaking news. San Antonio Fire Department responding to a fire at a home on North Zarzamora. This is over on the city's west side. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live from the scene. And Jonathan, we can see there is still a lot of activity behind you. What have you been able to learn? Good morning, Stephanie. That's right. Lots of activity. The scene here is still very much active. I'm located on the 1000 block of North Zarzamora and Delgado Street. As you mentioned, this is on the city's west side in the area of Woodlawn Lake. But I'm going to step off to the side that we can take a good look here. Um, the firefighters kind of starting to put away their equipment, but we do know they responded shortly after 4 o'clock this morning. They tell us they saw heavy smoke coming from the back end of this abandoned home when they arrived. They say, luckily, this house did not have any electricity or gas supplied to uh, this this lot here, but the neighboring lot did experience some damage. You can see here off to the side some of their vehicles that were damaged as a result of this fire here, but luckily no injuries were reported. Now, I asked fire crews on scene, were there any challenges that they were met with? And luckily they said no, but they did have a little bit of, of a difficult time accessing the house as the windows and the doors were boarded up. But other than that, it, uh, they were able to quickly extinguish those flames that were in the back end of the house. They tell me there was a lot of garbage and a lot of debris here, but of course the cause of the fire is still under investigation. Mark Stephanie, we're going to remain here on scene and update you as any more information is possibly made available. Reporting live from the west side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Jonathan. New this morning, San Antonio police are looking for four people involved in a deadly shooting at an apartment. It happened last night close to Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. Camelia Juarez joins us live. And Camelia, what do we know so far? Well, Stephanie, this morning, San Antonio police say that a man was visiting his friend's apartment on the west side, not far from Lackland Air Force Base, just outside uh, near Highway 90, just inside Loop 410. That's when they say four people were forced their way inside of the apartment with a gun. The victim swatted that gun. However, San Antonio police say that he was ultimately shot multiple times in the chest and once in the leg. SAPD said he died died on his way to University Hospital. Right now, San Antonio police are still looking for the people involved, those four people um, who are responsible. Reporting live, Camelia Juarez, Quesa 12 News. Thank you, Camelia. Also new this morning, San Antonio police say a driver's in critical condition after a crash overnight happened just after two at the intersection of North Wiedner and Crosswinds Way. SAPD says a man driving a small white car collided with an 18 wheeler after driving under the trailer. You can see that in that video there. The driver of the car was taken to the hospital in critical condition. There were no reports of any other injuries. This morning, tributes continue to pour in for Queen Elizabeth II. Last night, the Empire State Building lit up in purple with a silver sparkle to honor the longest serving monarch in British history. It's one of several memorials happening around the globe and crowds gathered outside Windsor Castle as people placed flowers along the fencing. The Queen's funeral will take place after a 10 day period of mourning. Prince Charles now immediately becomes king. In your morning headlines, the brother of a former NFL star has been indicted for murder in North Texas. A Dallas County grand jury indicted Jakob Talib in the shooting death of Michael Hickman. Talib is accused of shooting and killing the 43-year-old coach during a youth football game last month. Authorities say he pulled out the gun after a disagreement with the opposing team. The 39-year-old is the brother of former cornerback Akib Talib, who won a Super Bowl with the Denver Broncos back in 2016. A bankruptcy judge has approved the Boy Scouts reorganization plan that will enable it to pay more than $2.4 billion to sexual abuse survivors. The organization owes that money to more than 82,000 survivors who suffered abuse over decades. Most of that money is going to come from insurance companies, but some of it will come from the Methodist Church and the Boy Scouts organization. The plan also calls for the Boy Scouts to implement safety measures to prevent future abuse. The ruling is expected to allow the Boy Scouts of America to emerge from Chapter 11 bankruptcy proceedings. And NASA says it has two new dates in mind for the next attempt at launching its massive new moon rocket on an uncrewed test mission. They are September 23rd, or September 27th. It comes after two scrubbed launches last week over technical issues. NASA is trying to fix a leaky fuel problem with the rocket. 
The Artemis 1 mission is just the start of a program that aims to return people to the moon and eventually land crewed missions on Mars. 539, 74 degrees. And is it a cold, the flu, or COVID-19? How you can tell the difference since the symptoms are very similar. Outside with live cam as you prepare for your weekend. Looking back towards downtown, the Alamo Dome all lit up. Big weekend of high school, college, and pro football. We have more coming up on GMSA, including another look at your morning commute. 542 on your Friday, U.S. health officials are urging those eligible to get the latest COVID vaccination alongside a flu shot. CNN's Mandy Gaither shows us how to tell the difference between flu and COVID-19. Is it a cold? The flu, a sinus infection, or COVID-19. Since symptoms of all of these illnesses are similar, it may be hard to tell the difference. Probably flu will be pretty severe this year. Um, COVID cases will probably go up. Dr. Barbara Bauer with Ohio State's Wexner Medical Center says anyone who gets sick should pay close attention to all of their symptoms. She says if you have a dry cough, it's likely caused by COVID-19, as cold and sinus infections are tied to nasal congestion, leading to coughs that tend to be more mucousy. A fever might signal the flu. Bauer says a fever can accompany COVID, but not quite as often and rarely with a cold or sinus infection infection. If you have shortness of breath, it's most likely COVID-19. This symptom only rarely is associated with a cold, flu, or sinus infection. Also pay attention to how long it took you to feel sick. Bauer says sinus infections and colds typically continue to get worse over a couple of days. Flu affects a person immediately, while the timing of COVID-19 symptoms can vary based on vaccine status and immunity from a prior infection. Taking an at-home COVID test can help. Just to know whether you were positive or not, and then um, schedule an appointment with your doctor to see if you're eligible for you know, certain treatments. Bauer says the best way to protect yourself from severe illness from COVID and the flu is to get vaccinated. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. And time now, it's 544 and 74 degrees for now. You know we love furry critters here on GMSA. Coming up, San Antonio Humane Society is uh, coming along with this adorable bandana-wearing puppy. <laughs> 've got a new oh look at those beautiful kind of oh. hazel greenish eyes oh and my the goodness. gorgeous coat hi sweetie Lucy is here from the San Antonio Humane Society oh look my at her. goodness gracious who's She's this baby beautiful this is Anne she's a puppy retriever mix just two months old so she's very sweet very calm right now but she's definitely look Puppy kisses, they're the best. <laughs> yeah, and in that two month little period where they're kind of like, eh, I don't know yeah. what's going on, but you know, this one is just gonna be all, oh, she's yes. gonna be taking up a good chunk of the couch. Oh, probably definitely, Probably so. Definitely. Maybe hopping into bed with you as well. Yes. And perfect little, uh, just, companion out there. It's going to be a <laughs> decent sized dog. With yes, definitely. Too, so. Be ready for lots of playful puppy energy, lots of and training. Kisses. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what you got going on if you're done kissing her? Let her talk yes, for a second, okay? I know. We are always looking for supplies for our shelter to help care for our pets, just like Miss Ann. So I know it's summertime uh, at the end, so people like to clean their closets, their home. So blankets, towels, beach towels, they help with our surgeries. All things like that help us a lot. And we do have a donation station that's new set up right outside of our shelter. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, and it's labeled. It says newspapers, uh, pet food, um, and supplies. So it's very easy. You can just drop them off there. And if you don't want to make the drive, you can also just go to our website and shop online from our wish list. The Amazon and a couple of clicks and it's right there. But, yeah. you know, that's a great thing because, you know, how many times do you have those old towels and you don't know what to do with yes. them? You stuff them in a the closet somewhere. So just drop them there and you can... You use a million of them and oh, can yes. use a million more so yes yes <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh I, I wish you could see this little dog's eyes are I know. She's gorgeous got color of hazel if you'd like more information eight. about everything their wish list and uh, little Anne here just head on over to 4804 Fredericksburg Road 226-7461 thank you dear thank you 
You know, there's something about puppy breath that's so sweet. I don't Aww. know what it is. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's just very charming. Uh, you know what else is sweet is traffic right now. We're not seeing any other issues out there at this point, uh, but we are seeing a lot more folks getting the morning started there at 10 at ProBand. You can see it's definitely picking up out as we get it closer to 6 a.m. So we will likely see some slowdowns, but right now, not seeing that just yet, but we are seeing those active construction spots that we continue to mention through uh, through the and around the Alamo City. Pardon me, but you can see there some of them are actually pretty active, and others are still taking place, and some are actually going to be taking place throughout the weekend. Here's one I-10 over on the east side of Bear County. We continue to talk about the work that takes place out there. This time, barrier work will actually begin tonight. That is Friday, September 9th. That should wrap wrap up on uh, Monday, September 12th. It is overnight, so nine in the evening to five in the morning is when you can expect to see a full closure of the westbound main lanes from file road to loop 1604. So make sure that you plan your commute ahead of time, especially if you travel through I-10, maybe heading up or to Seguin. Uh, but either, either which way, just drive carefully. Right now, the roads are quiet there by the airport and there at 1604 Kitty Hawk. Looks like we may be getting a few more folks out there, guys. All right, thanks for the heads up, Stephen. Yeah, good for Friday. Yes, puppy breath is great, yeah. mm -hmm. but don't forget the big dogs there too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the yeah. puppies are cute and all that, but you know, you know exactly what you're getting with the big dogs. Yeah. True. They're not uh, housebreaking usually. Anne was adorable. Uh, yeah, it was so and I love her coloring too. Yes. She's beautiful. Yes. Sweet as can be. So yeah. go out there and check it out. All right. A couple of heavy downpours. Torrential rain yesterday probably didn't last all that long. Very look at that. Here's the exact. I mean, it's almost like a wall right there. There's that rain shaft and then nothing off to the uh, the side of it. And that's going to be the situation again today. Football tonight. It's going to be a nice evening. Probably won't need a jacket. We're going to be 90 at kickoff, 85 at halftime. A stray storm. Again, one or two of them. Odds are not going to be raining at uh, any of the stadiums around the area, but just kind of keep that in mind. Sun's going to be going down just about uh, 745 or so. And we've got a couple of clouds hanging around here right now. And still those few showers and notice how they are continuing to die down as uh, time rolls on. This one may actually work its way in a little bit closer toward Crystal City. I don't even think it'll last as long as hitting a Carrizo Springs right there. And that one, which was packing a pretty good, uh, some pretty good downpours earlier this morning, that is also sort of just wearing out, if you will. We're going to drop down to 74. It's all said and done. And then once that sun comes up, temperatures really shoot up quickly. We'll gain three, four degrees each and every hour up to 87 at 1189 noon and throughout the rest of the 12 hour forecast, 95 high temperature. And once again, there's that 10% chance for one or two of those showers to pop up. Now, obviously, temperatures are going to be very dependent upon the cloud cover. Yesterday, clouds moved in very quickly, broke up enough to get us up to 94 uh, out there at the airport. So if they kind of hang in, you may stay a little bit lower than that, but uh, don't count on rain today, unfortunately. Here's the computer model, and uh, yeah, there's not really a lot that it's trying to show up. Yeah, a few decent downpours may pop up here and there, and we'll have to watch that into the early evening hours. And then tomorrow, about the same situation. We still have this northerly flow in the atmosphere, so these little disturbances that are being thrown down in our direction will touch off one or two of the uh, showers around the area. Again, the emphasis being don't count on rain. Here's what's going on. We still have this low off to the east of us. Not in really good position to give us great rain chances, but the combination between that and the high keeps us in that northerly flow. And so that's why we have those little disturbances moving on through here. This thing's eventually just going to sort of uh, fizzle on out, and that means the high is pretty much going to take over, and that's going to dominate our weather. The low up there in the Great Lakes, that's going to try to throw a front through here. Not any sort of a big fall front. We're still going to be on the hot side, but it will trim humidity a little bit as we go into the first part of next week. It's still going to be though, very hot and very sunny. At least we get a little bit lower humidity. So today we're going to be up to 89 degrees at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then Early afternoon, we start to see one or two of those showers. Clouds will build up somewhat. A couple of showers going to be popping up here and there. 95 high temperature. Ozone action day for the metropolitan area going up I-35 in toward Austin. And very consistent. Yeah, these are the normal high temperatures right around, oh, say mid to late July. Mid-July, 95 degrees. So it's still a summary pattern, very consistent, you know, one day right after the other. The only real change is going to be slightly drier air coming in first of the week. Well, the, as we've mentioned before, especially on this newscast, if there's anything we try to embrace, it's normal, mm -hmm. if at all possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. These all aren't right. normal. Okay. okay. Nor us. I mean. <laughs>
Jeff's <laughs> 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 the closest. Aw, thanks. thanks. <laughs> she is the most normal of the lot. That's right now, 554, 73 degrees. Let's look at your normal winning lotto numbers there. Pick three, nine, seven, seven, fireball one. Daily four, five, two, six, six, fireball zero. Cash five number seven, 12, 22, 23, 30. Texas two step, five, 11, 16, 34. Bonus ball, 17. Registration is open for the ninth annual Head for the Cure. The 5K Run and Walk raises awareness to funds to fight brain cancer. KSAT's uh, News Director Jim Boyle was diagnosed with glioblastoma and passed away many years ago, but his legacy lives on. His daughter helped kick off the event outside the KSAT studios back in 2014. Since then, it's grown with more families running for survivors and in remembrance of their loved ones. This year, it all kicks off September 24th. You can register right now on KSAT.com. Use the promo code KSAT to get $5 off your registration. We'd love to see you out there. Ahead the next hour, GMSA this weekend marks 21 years since the 9-11 attacks and the effort to remember heroes from that day continue this Sunday. Well, first responders are planning over at the Tower of the Americas here in San Antonio. Plus, if you had just, uh, oh, rather, up next, tributes are pouring in across the globe, honoring the life and legacy of Queen Elizabeth, how the White House is honoring her today and this weekend. And checking trans guide right now, 1604 Kitty Hawk. The lights are bright, waiting for the sun to come up. We're going to be right back with more. This morning on GMSA Tributes, pouring in across the globe, honoring the life and legacy of Queen Elizabeth II. How the White House is honoring her today and this weekend. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we're starting off pretty calm at 73 degrees. This week has been a week of rain here and there. We're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect this weekend. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio <coughs> starts right now. And good morning. It is Friday, September 9th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a wonderful week and, you know, looking forward to the weekend, even if it's a hot one. That's right. 73 degrees. Fairly pleasant out there right now. Mike Ostray joins us. We'll look at our Friday and beyond. Yeah, we don't have, you know, last week we had these, the humidity was just sky high. You know, it was like putting on a, a wet towel, basically. So it is a little bit more pleasant around here this morning. We still keep some humidity around in the afternoon. That though looks like it's going to be dropping down by next week. Now, as far as this morning, we'll not bad. Should be a good looking uh, sunrise. We've got just a couple of clouds out there and a couple of leftover showers. This one little batch heading right, uh, well, almost to the east of Crystal City. I don't think it's going to make it as far west as Carrizo Springs. That batch of rain was really packing a punch there for a while. It was coming down at the rate of about five, six inches per hour, and that continues. Even though it's continuing to move down to the south on 35, it's uh, sort of weakening. We're not seeing as intense rainfall, so that will continue to sort of fizzle on out in the next uh, say hour, hour and a half. 75 in town, 70 hello to 64 now up the road at Bernie Stage. Almost coolish, dare I say. 67 Kerrville and uh, 77 up the road at Canyon Lake. Mold is moderate. Fall elm, pigweed, grass, ragweed, all on the low side. A whole grocery list of allergens. Also, ozone action day today. So uh, that's the metropolitan area going up I-35 in toward Austin. If you can maybe hold off Fill up the tank till later on this evening or early in the morning. That would help out. 74 this morning, and we'll have a couple of clouds hanging around here. Once the sun gets up higher in the sky, obviously it's going to heat up very quickly. We'll make it up to 87 today at noon, and then a high temperature is going to make it up to 95. Normal average is 92, so definitely on the warm side. And one or two of those showers out there like we had yesterday, the day before that. Unfortunately, most of us won't see any rain. Nice thing is, still a very small chance for a couple of showers tomorrow, and then after that pretty much just hot and sunny details coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Stephen, what's cooking well i would say that things aren't sizzling just yet mike but we are seeing that traffic is getting a little bit busier out there on trans guide 281 at hildebrand you can see right now uh, just one or two folks out there this early 37 at carolina though it is getting a little bit busy now these trans guide cameras aren't really showing any issues out there in fact they're really kind of just showing some quiet roadways however our map is showing a different situation let's just go ahead and take you right to that problem on the 
the west side of San Antonio. You can see right there along Loop 410, a crash has been reported in the southbound lanes of Mar uh, 410, not far from Marbach Road. That slowdown that you're seeing in the red and the orange is backed up all the way to West Military. So I'll have to look for some solutions and get our friends at Transguide on the phone, find out exactly what the de delay is and what the conditions look like at this point. But right now, conditions aren't looking bad if you are going to be traveling into San Antonio at this hour from any of these communities. Still pretty green from Seguin on I-10 westbound if you're traveling in uh, right now. 29 minutes, 33, a little more than half an hour on 87 northbound. And for our friends down in Floridasville, looks like a 29-minute drive time. But let's take it back to Transguide one more time. 35 at Evans. You can see things are getting a little bit busier. Again, we'll have updates on that incident taking place off of 410. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Back to some late breaking news. We're tracking this morning on GMSA. Happening now, the San Antonio Fire Department responding to a fire on North Star Zamora on the city's west side. All right, Jonathan Cotto joins us live from the scene. And Jonathan, we can still see that there was a lot of activity out there. What have you been able to find out? Good morning, Stephanie. That's right. Still a busy scene here. San Antonio Fire Department starting to pack their stuff up but they are still investigating the cause of this fire. I'll step off to the side that you can take a quick look of the structure that was involved here this morning. We're learning San Antonio Fire Department responding to the 1000 block of North Sar Samora just minutes after four o'clock this morning. They tell us that this abandoned house caught on fire when they arrived. They saw heavy amounts of smoke coming from the back end of this home. They were met with uh, a little bit of a challenge accessing the house since the front door and the windows were all boarded up. But once inside, they were able to quickly put out those flames. They tell us inside the home there was a lot of garbage, a lot of trash. So that was also a, a bit of a challenge for them as they navigated the interior of this abandoned house. Now off to the side, there's an old car lot here with a number of vehicles. The vehicles closest to the home experiencing some level of damage right now. We are told the house is a total loss. And although fire crews are getting ready to wrap up the scene here, we do know there are a number of firefighters on the back end of the house uh, still keeping an eye out for those hot spots that we know can tend to kind of just resurface at, at, at any time. So that's what they're doing at this moment. But of course, Mark, Stephanie, the cause of the fire here is still under investigation. The good news this morning is no injuries were reported. Reporting live from the city's west side, Jonathan Cotto, KSET 12 News. Jonathan, thank you for that report. New this morning, a man is dead after being shot at an apartment complex on the west side. San Antonio police say it happened just before midnight in the 2500 block of Westwood Drive uh, near Highway 90. Uh, SAPD says the man was visiting a friend when four suspects rushed into the apartment with a gun. Police say the victim tried to swat the gun away but was shot several times in the chest, once in the leg. SAPD says he was taken to the hospital but died on the way. So far, no word on any suspect descriptions or arrests. And San Antonio fire investigators are looking into the cause of a fire on the city's south side after a roof collapse. This happened in the 200 block of Washington near Turner Street. The fire broke out in a brick garage that was being used as a woodworking shop and crews were able to put that fire out quickly and no injuries were reported. Firefighters also responded to a house fire overnight on Piper's Creek at north, on the northwest side. Police say a resident got up to his restroom when he heard a loud crash coming from his room where there was a burning candle. The resident came out to a hallway full of smoke. Everyone inside was able to make it out safely, but unfortunately their dog did not. Two people airlifted to San Antonio hospitals following a shooting at a park in Uvalde yesterday. This morning, four people are in custody. Comes just days after students return to class at Uvalde CISD. Uvalde's mayor says the shooting is believed to be gang related. According to Uvalde police, the shooting call came in around 530 last night. Police say one victim is 22. The other is a juvenile. Mayor Don McLaughlin says the gang's involvement has been going back and forth for months now. He also spoke to the concern of the community as it still tries to heal from the Robb Elementary shooting. Everybody's going to be on pins and needles, but like I said, we've got plenty of DPS officers at these schools, local officers. I know this, I know the trust is not there, but, but we will be there. We, we, we will not let this community down again. The Uvalde Together Resiliency Center was temporarily evacuated due to the shooting. They want to remind people there's a 24-7 hotline for those who may need counseling or other services. We have all that information on KSAT.com. 
School counselors will be available at New Braunfels ISD campuses this morning as students at the high school return to campus following a school lockdown. Now, the high school was placed on lockdown yesterday after police say they got a tip that there was a gun on campus. So this was a scene outside the school as parents were picking up their kids. District officials say they did not take the threat lightly. Students were cleared from classrooms with their hands raised as officers searched the entire school. Even the South Texas blood bank flew in blood to nearby hospitals in preparation for any emergency. Parents were relieved to know their kids were safe and happy with the response. I think this is going to be the new normal. So we're, I mean, we weren't complaining if they kept your kids safe. I just don't think we should be scared to come to school every day. Like, just be afraid to not come back home. The investigation is ongoing to find out who made that call. This morning, Queen Elizabeth II's legacy being honored across the United States and around the world. Political leaders, rock stars, and even Britons leaving here, living here in the U.S. are remembering the Queen's legacy. ABC's Jay O'Brien has the latest from Washington. This morning, the United States mourning the death of the United Kingdom's beloved monarch, Queen Elizabeth II. In Washington, flags ordered to half-staff at the White House and Capitol. President Joe Biden Thursday signing a condolence book at the British Embassy, celebrating what he called the Queen's enduring strength and her life of public service. Later, addressing her passing at a Democratic Party reception. The thoughts and prayers of the American people are with the people of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth in their grief. Leaders from both political parties celebrating the Queen's legacy. Former President Trump saying she will always be remembered for her faithfulness to her country and her unwavering devotion to her fellow countrymen and women. Former President Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama writing the Queen meant a great deal to us. We were struck by her warmth, the way she put people at ease. Brits across the U.S. describing a feeling of grief. She's somebody to look up to. It's a huge loss when do you feel the connection. And Beatles legend Paul McCartney also tweeting, God bless Queen Elizabeth II. Elton John saying the Queen has been a huge part of my life from childhood to this day, and I will miss her dearly. The Queen will have a state funeral in London. A date for that is expected to be announced soon. It's expected heads of state from across the globe will attend. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. And looking ahead, this weekend will mark 21 years since the September 11th attacks. However, a group here in San Antonio isn't waiting until then to pay tribute. The United Way partnered with Bear County to host a service day this week, and more than 400 volunteers put together 1,200 family emergency kits should families ever need them. The effort to remember the heroes that day will continue with a climb at the Tower of the Americas in downtown San Antonio this year. Last year's ceremony was changed because of the pandemic. First responders and other participants are known to climb the Tower of the Americas twice to pay tribute to those lost on 9-11. And the time now is 6-11 and 73 degrees for now. Still to come on GMSA, Uber Eats teaming up with a self-driving company bringing quote-unquote robot food to Texas. We'll tell you when drivers could see those self-driving cars on the streets. And after the break, we have two months to go until the November election. So civic leaders are pushing to get more young people out to the polls in more ways than one. Outside with Live Cam, you're starting your day with GMSA, waiting for the sun to come up. It's gonna be a pretty good weekend around here. We'll talk to Steve and get an update on the morning commute. For those of you heading out the door between now and 6.30, we'll be back. And welcome back. It's about 6.15. And according to the U.S. Census, voters over the age of 65 cast a majority of the votes during midterm elections. But here at home, civic leaders are pushing to get more and more young people out to the polls in more ways than one. Northside ISD's Holmes High School has two volunteer deputy registrars. One of them is math teacher James Hamrick. He's on a mission to register as many as eligible students as possible before the deadline. October 11th, last year Hamrick registered nearly 80 students. For more details on how you can get paid to be an election clerk for the upcoming November 8th election day, visit our website at ksat.com. 
KSET community is getting ready for what has become a yearly tradition here. Registration is open for the ninth annual Head for the Cure. The 5K run and walk raises awareness and funds to find brain cancer. KSAT's former news director Jim Boyle was diagnosed with glioblastoma and passed away, but his legacy lives on every day. His daughter helped kick off the event outside the KSAT studios back in 2014. Since then, it's grown with more and more families running for survivors and in remembrance of their loved ones. And this year it all kicks off on September 24th. You can register right now on KSAT.com. You can use the promo code KSAT to get $5 off the registration. Friday morning, 616. Go ahead and check back with Stephen Cabasas. Yeah, I wouldn't say this is a great shot here, guys. Let's get a look there at 410, or 90 at 410, pardon me. Uh, I was talking to our friends at Transguide on the phone. We can see those flashing lights out there. And if you were with us or are just waking up, we told you about a crash taking place here if off of 410 that is near US 90. And you can see that is not a good place to be right now because traffic is already starting to get pretty busy out there. Still very dark. And unfortunately, we are not sure on the details behind this particular incident, but as always, we are, hope everybody's okay. Let's take you right to that area because uh, where our map is picked it up is in the southbound lanes of 410, not far from Marbach Road, closer to US 90. So the shots at Transguy that we're getting are different viewpoints of that incident. So the one you saw was at 90. We know that it is in the same vicinity. So if you need to drive through the area, you can see the slowdown there backed up to West Military. So a quick solution as well. Uh, it looks like we, we are going to see here is another crash that also may have popped up or it could just be a duplicate icon. That means sometimes our map We'll sometimes have uh, different icons that pop up in different locations, but it could be the same incident. I'll find out with our friends at Transguide, but exit Colebita Road, if you're trying to avoid that mess and turn left on onto, uh, pardon me, turn left, what you'll do then is turn right onto Callahan Road, then head on to US 90 if you'd like to avoid that mess that we're seeing on the screen there. And of course, we give you a wide look at the map. Not a lot else to show you out there, just some quiet roadways, thankfully. Uh, but as we mentioned, as Mike's mentioned, today has been declared an ozone action day. So if you do need to fuel up your vehicle, make sure that you do it a little bit later in the afternoon if possible or even in the evening. But what you can do right now, if you are going to be heading to the gas station later tonight, 308 is what you can expect in the average gas price in Bear County and here in Kendall County or over in Kendall County, pardon me, 319. And for our friends in Guadalupe County, $3.09 is what you can expect. But again, it is advised that you probably do that a little bit later in the day, later in the afternoon or evening if possible. But right now here at Transguide, we'll keep a close eye on this incident, give you those updates here on GMSA. Guys, so nice to see those gas prices continue to drop down a bit. Yes, that's very nice, and it's yeah. nice to see a little less humidity. <laughs> that's going to be the case, especially uh, going into the first part of next week. We've got a somewhat of a front moving on through here, and and it's always kind of um, can. I don't want to use that, that word front this time of year because everybody always thinks it's the big, you know, fall front moving through. Now, this one is all it's going to do is really just trim some of the humidity and that won't be until the first part of the week. It's still going to be on the warm side and uh, still plenty of sunshine. Probably cloudy skies this morning, 74 degrees when it's all said and done. And then later on this afternoon, like we had yesterday and the day before that and so forth, a couple of showers out there. Very, very few and far between. Most of us won't see any rain, but uh, Again, at least there's going to be a couple of them out there. Now, this morning, a lot of folks are going to be seeing a picture that looks like this, and it was a, just a beautiful, beautiful sunrise. Almost uh, says looks like a fireball in the sky out there. And uh, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. We're not seeing any of the glow of the uh, sunrise as of yet. And it's going to be coming up just after about a uh, quarter after seven. One thing we got to watch out for down to the southeast. We're seeing some fog well down here along the coastal plain. Just a bit of reduced visibility in Gonzales, Victoria as well. And then uh, Corpus Christi Weather Service put out uh, kind of a message saying to watch out for that down here, down along the, uh, the coastal plain. So nothing here in town, but we will see, like I said, some of that down to the southeast. To the southwest, still a few of these straggling showers kind of hanging in there tough, but again, continuing to sort of die off and work their way down to the south. A few of them just uh, about crossing into Dimmick County from Zavala County, just to the east of Carrizo Springs. Pretty much just following right down on 35 down there south of uh, Catula. So we'll be at 74 degrees this morning and then big warm up once that sun gets a little higher in the sky all the way up into the mid 80s by mid morning, 89 at noon and then a high temperature today up to 95 and 10 percent chance for one or two of those showers. We'll have a couple of extra clouds here and there and that'll be about the extent of it. Again, computer models are not really too awfully uh, encouraging or bullish about rain chances. Just a few of those spots here and there could have a you know a decent downpour if something does happen to pop up 
won't, won't last very long and then they'll start to die down once we go into the overnight hours. Although there's still going to be another chance for a couple of showers even tomorrow. We still have this northerly flow in the atmosphere, so models are still picking up one or two of those out there. Again, you can count them on on one hand. That'll be about the extent of it. So today, 89 at noon. Partly cloudy skies, high temperature will make it up to 95. That's the, the average high temperature right now. Normal is 92. That's the average right around, say, mid leaning toward late July. So definitely on the warm side, one or two of those showers out there. As Stephen mentioned, the ozone action day is in effect today for the metropolitan area and then also heading up toward Austin. Same thing tomorrow. Small chance for shower, 95. Pretty much take rain chances out of the picture then. As we go into uh, next week, slightly lower humidity. So those morning low temperatures will be a bit lower. It'll be a little more pleasant, but uh, yeah, nothing very fallish in this forecast yet. We'll take a little bit yeah. in yep. the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 72 is okay. Yeah, well, won't be bad. That's down mm -hmm. close to where it should be. Mm -hmm. We love the 70s. Thanks. The, the decade or the temperatures? Both. Both. Yes. <laughs> the answer is a resounding yes. Break out the bell bottom. Six, well, most people. 622, 74 degrees. And still ahead, YouTube has launched a video player for education apps. We're going to tell you how it works and how it can help students next. Ladies, six minutes, please. <laughs> this is my life. It's not always picture perfect. Plus, I'm dealing with bleeding from uterine fibroids. Enter MyFembry, a once daily pill for women with heavy menstrual bleeding due to uterine fibroids. With MyFembry, heavy bleeding went down by 84%. Serious risks include heart attack, stroke, and blood clots. Don't take MyFembry if you've had any of these or have uncontrolled high blood pressure, are over 35 and smoke, could be pregnant, or have or had osteoporosis, liver disease, undiagnosed vaginal bleeding, certain cancers, or an allergic reaction to it. Don't use longer than two years as bone loss may occur. Pregnancy loss can occur and changes in periods may make it hard to know if you're pregnant. If you think you are, stop taking it right away. Other risks are depression, suicidal thoughts or actions, abnormal liver tests, high blood pressure, and passing of the fibroid. Less bleeding, same life. I'll take it. Ask your doctor about my Fembry. My life, my Fembry. And welcome back. It is 625. YouTube has launched a video player for education apps, and it comes without ads, external links, or recommendations. The goal of the launch is to avoid distractions for viewers. For now, it's only open to select partners, including Google Classroom. Uber Eats has teamed up with an autonomous startup known as Neuro. The deal will bring robot food delivery to California and parts of Texas. The Neuro vehicle can travel up to 45 miles an hour and carry 500 pounds. They will begin making deliveries in Houston and San Francisco this fall. And time now, 626 and 74 degrees for now. Still ahead at 630. If you had just one or two hours a, a week extra, what would you do with it? Will help you. Would it help? I'd rather, and would you look to help others? How you can find your calling as a volunteer coming up. Plus, NASA says they could try to launch the Artemis rocket before the end of this month. We're going to tell you when you can mark your calendars in just moments. Traffic is really a mess right now. Part of Loop 410 near Calabra. An update coming up right here on GMSA with Stephen Cavazos. One man is dead after a shooting at a West Side apartment complex. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you what police say happened right before that man's death. I'm ABC's Patrick Reval in London, and I'll have the latest on the passing of Queen Elizabeth and the commemorations here coming up. Outside with live cam, the sun is just now beginning to come up. With big news right now, we've got big problems on the roads. We'll talk to Stephen in just a sec. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, September 9th. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that traffic mess in just a minute. But for now, um, yeah, we're looking forward to a hot weekend. Mm -hmm. And hopefully a couple of showers. A couple of folks have had, you know, showered yesterday, one or two of them day before that, uh, one or two of them today, as well as tomorrow. We're starting off about the same as we did yesterday. As you can see, a little bit of the glow of the uh, the sunrise. Sun's actually going to be peeking over the horizon in, well, eh, not for about another 45 minutes. Just one or two clouds hanging around out there. Temperature has been holding pretty steady, 75 degrees. I think we'll be at the 74 when it's all said and done. 69 is the dew point. That actually dropped a degree so it's not bad when you 
step outside. Not much of a breeze out there as of right now. We are still looking at some of those leftover little showers right there heading down from Zavala into Dimmick County, just to the east of Carrizo Springs. And that batch of rain, which is going right down 35, is starting to die down. But these are sort of holding together. Uh, they'll continue to drift down to the south. So at least they're not sitting in just one spot and obviously very localized. And that's what it's going to be like later on this afternoon. Also, watch out for a hint of fog. There is some showing up here along the coastal plain. And then also as you head down toward uh, 37. Temperatures around the area. So look at that, 64 burning stage, 65 comfort right now. And a low 70s, low to mid 70s elsewhere. Just a whole bunch of allergens out there this morning. And throughout the rest of today, nice this morning. Like I said, some clouds out there. Partly cloudy skies. It is going to be hot. Couple of showers. The vast majority of us won't see any rain. Same thing tomorrow. Mostly sunny, still on the hot side. Mid 90s, about three, almost four degrees above normal. And that's going to be the situation next week. Take out the small chance for a shower. Also, we may get rid of a little bit of the humidity. So not a huge drop. I mean, it's not bone dry here, but at least um, won't be quite as uh, quite as humid in the afternoons. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, huge mess out there, right? Yeah, gosh, Mike, you know, unfortunately, this is not the way we want to start a Friday morning, but of course, we want to make sure that we let people know what to expect out there. 410 over on the west side of San Antonio, you can see it right behind me. We have basically a parking lot that is developing there along those uh, southbound lanes of 410. I was taking a closer look. It does appear that first responders are actually directing traffic off of 410 onto State Highway 151. That's exit 9A. But you can see it's already causing a mess and a buildup. That is because unfortunately we do have that crash reported not too far from Marbach Road, which is a little bit further down, which would make sense, which is why first responders have blocked off the vehicles there so they can inspect uh, the situation and the conditions out there. But it's not looking good there on the map. In fact, uh, in the last few minutes or so, we've continued to see that buildup just stretch a little bit further back, far further than West Military. But there in the southbound lanes of 410 is where the crash is initially been reported. So we'll have to watch that area closely throughout the morning, and you can see it already causing some issues out there. And let's give you a wide bird's eye view of the metro area. Looks like another crash may have popped up there near I-10 at Crossroads. I'll get our friends at Transguide on the phone. It's been a busy morning for them as well. And of course, those first responders out there working to keep the road safe. But make sure you stay safe out there. This is 410 Equilever, the shot from Transguide. We are working to get some information, and I'll be looking for those solutions right here on GMSA. Mark Steph. Thank you, Stephen. Back to late breaking news. San Antonio Fire Department responded to a fire at a home on North Star Zamora. That's over on San Antonio's west side. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live from that scene. And good morning, Jonathan. We were told this happened at an abandoned home. Was anyone hurt? Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Mark. And that's an excellent question, Stephanie. You know, typically in these types of situations, that's the first thing we ask. Was anybody injured? And the good news here this morning is no injuries were reported. As you mentioned, this house was abandoned. The scene here is now clear. But well, we can take a look at what that scene looked like just moments ago. We know San Antonio Fire Department responded to the 1000 block of North Salsa Mora and Gilbert Street just down the road from Culebra here on the city's west side just minutes after 4 o'clock this morning. They arrived to the structure that you see there on your scene engulfed in flames and heavy smoke. The fire starting in the back end of this house. Again, this house was abandoned. And the good news, too, is that there was no gas or electrical connections to it. But Firefighters were met with a number of challenges. One of them was accessing the interior of this house. They say the front door and the windows were all boarded up, but they were able to quickly gain access once they were able to tear down that plywood. Inside of the home, Mark and Stephanie, was a bunch of garbage, which is an indication that, uh, again, the house was abandoned and it could have been met with some stragglers there, some folks with without a home that could have possibly been there uh, before the fire, but the cause of the fire still remains under investigation. Another Another detail here this morning is that right next to this house is a car lot. Uh, several vehicles in that car lot did experience some level of damage. For As for the house, the house is considered a total loss. Again, no injuries were reported and uh, the cause of the fire is still under investigation. Reporting live from the city's west side, Jonathan Cotton, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Also new this morning, San Antonio police say a visit with friends turned deadly overnight. One person was shot and killed at a west side apartment just inside Loop 10. Camelia Juarez joins us live with the latest. Camelia, what happened? 
Good morning. San Antonio police tell us that it all started when a man was visiting his friend's place just around midnight. Suddenly, four men forced their way into the apartment with a gun. Now, the man fought back, pushing the gun away from him, but he was shot several times in the chest and once in the leg. He died on the way to the hospital. At this time, we're working to learn that man's identity. We're also working to learn more about those four suspects responsible for this man's death. This story so far is posted on our website, ksat.com. You can find more information there. Live downtown, Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Camelia. Topping your other morning headlines, the royal succession underway in Great Britain as the world mourns the death of Queen Elizabeth II at age 96. The Queen's son is now King Charles III. He's returning to London from Scotland today to observe 10 days of mourning and begin a series of events years in the making. ABC's Patrick Reville has more. This morning, King Charles is preparing to address the United Kingdom. His first public speech to his subjects since the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth. The king expected to return to London today as the country goes into mourning. So far, issuing a short statement calling this a moment of greatest sadness. The bells at Windsor Castle and St. Paul's Cathedral to toll around noon today. Then a 96-gun salute at Hyde Park, one round for each year of the queen's life. The first of extraordinary commemorations being launched under an elaborate plan called Operation London Bridge. Charles expected to be formally proclaimed King Charles III at St. James's Palace within 24 hours. His wife Camilla will acquire the title Queen Consort. Thoughts and prayers of all of us will be with Her Majesty the Queen. All parliamentary activity will be suspended for 10 days for a period of mourning. Crowds have been gathering outside Buckingham Palace since the royal family announced the Queen's death. Shocked. I can't believe it. I'm gutted. Absolutely gutted. The announcement, as is tradition, posted on this modest placard on the gates, saying the Queen passed away peacefully at Balmoral Castle in Scotland. There, a steady stream of cars carrying members of the royal family, including Princes William and Harry. After the Queen's coffin travels to London, her body will lie in state at Westminster Hall for three days, allowing the public to pay their respects around the clock. The state funeral will then take place ten days after her death at Westminster Abbey. Quite shocking, really. You, you kind of always knew it was coming, but, you, but when it happens, it's just sad. Queen Elizabeth was last seen in public Tuesday, swearing in her new Prime Minister, Liz Truss. Reacting yesterday, Truss hailed the Queen as the rock of modern Britain. Our country has grown and flourished under her reign. Britain is the great country it is today because of her. The Queen's death is still sinking in for people here in the UK. She was such a constant in British culture. King Charles is now expected to address the nation later today in a pre-recorded message. Patrick Reval, ABC News, London. And looking ahead, NASA has two new dates for the next attempt in launching Artemis. So mark your calendars for September 23rd or September 27th. This announcement comes after two failed launches last week over a leak. NASA is also seeking a waiver on requiring batteries to be recharged at a nearby indoor facility. They hope to get that waived before the newly proposed launch dates. 639, 73 degrees. And up next on GMSA, if you had just one or two extra hours a week, how would you spend it? As we break the return to volunteerism and how you can find your best fit. Welcome back. 643, a national survey taken before the pandemic found that 90% of all Americans thought volunteering was worthwhile, but three out of four people did not take the time to get involved. After a big drop in face-to-face -face volunteering during COVID, Americans might be feeling ready to reconnect with their communities. Max Massey tells us how it's easier to find your fit and make a difference. What are you passionate about? Um, you know, what gets you up in the morning or what keeps you up at night? Lee Pike is the development manager of the nonprofit clearinghouse Activate Good. I like to call it a matchmaker for people that want to volunteer and organizations that rely on volunteer support. Last year, Activate Good matched 10,000 people with opportunities, impacting more than 115,000 people. For Nancy Sheehan, who is new to the area and lonely during COVID, it meant to use 20 years of experience as a school library. There's one thing I know about school libraries is the end of the year is a mess. And they put these in backwards because their kids is what they do. 
During her volunteer hours each week, Sheehan brings order to chaos. Studies have shown that volunteering improves self-esteem, increases social skills, and provides purpose. There are very impactful ways that you can contribute even with just an hour a week. Pike says she works to overcome some of the perceived drawbacks. Things like volunteering requires too much or it's too tough to find a good match. Hopefully, it doesn't prevent people from doing their part. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Just about 645. And it's still a big mess over there at Loop 410 and Calabria Road. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. That's right, bumper to bumper traffic out there. We showed you this shot earlier. This is a crash off of 410 in the southbound lanes, actually not far from Marbach Road. And you can see that that one area of those lanes, in fact, the northbound lanes, we're seeing a lot of traffic out there, but those southbound lanes pretty much empty. And that is because first responders have directed traffic off of that area onto State Highway 151. That's exit 9A. And you can see it. It's just not the place to be right Right now, if you have our case app, you may have just received a push alert right now that notified you of this location. We are going to continue to look for solutions throughout the morning, but again, just a place you may want to avoid if your commute does take you through there. But unfortunately, not the only incident that has popped up. It seems that as the morning has gone on, we have other crashes that now we have to talk about. Loop 1604, the southbound lanes, a little bit further west. We have this crash reported near State Highway 151. It is causing a little bit of a buildup out there, but nothing too bad. Nonetheless, you have to watch out for those those first responders and hopefully we can clear that scene. We talked about this incident here off of I-10 westbound near Crossroads. A crash also reported but not really causing any issues so we're not too concerned about it. But this one over here off of I-35 southbound is causing our northbound pardon me southbound pardon me is causing some issues out there and you can see that buildup already starting to develop. Again, it has been a pretty busy start to the, within the last 15 minutes or so for a lot of these commuters, but nonetheless, you have to make sure that you drive carefully out there. And I do want to give you a shot of that particular incident that we just mentioned there along 35 at Alamo. First responders out there on the scene, not necessarily a great shot, but shows those flashing lights that you want to be on the lookout for, guys. Steven, thank you very much. The sun is just now trying to come up, but the moon has been beautiful the I, last couple of mornings. I know it's a beautiful picture, and I actually like what's written there, too. They call it a <laughs> pumpkin spice moon. Yeah, oh. <laughs> technically the harvest moon because it's the full moon. It, tomorrow is technically the full moon. The full moon closest to the uh, autumnal equinox coming up on the 22nd, but they also call it the pumpkin spice moon because both are out in full force during the same month. Great shot there. And yes, the moon is going to be rising just as the sun is going down later on today. And if you don't have some of those clouds from some of the uh, stray showers and uh, storms popping up later on today, should be a beautiful moon rise and good moonlit night tonight for football. Kickoff 90 and 85 at halftime. A stray shower. This is just taking into account that 10% chance for one or two of those showers out there. Speaking of beautiful uh, Beautiful views there. Sun is going to be coming up in about oh, half an hour and just a few clouds hanging around right now. Some fog down to the southeast. Watch if you're going down 37 toward the coast and our extreme southeastern counties over there toward Victoria. Just a little bit of reduced visibility as of right now. And these showers off to the southwest are still kind of hanging in there. This first batch of rain, which as it moved through eastern Zavala County, is dumping rain at the rate of about five, six inches per hour. It is starting to settle down and just these few more continue. They are moving, so not just sitting in one spot, not anything overly heavy, just a little bit of a uh, little bit of rain out there, which is what we'll see later on today. A beautiful sunshine this morning. We will warm up quickly between especially eight, nine o'clock once that sun gets up a little bit higher in the sky and then throughout the rest of the 12 hour forecast, 89 at noon, 95 for a high temperature, still about three, four degrees above normal, above the average, that 10% chance for one or two showers out there. A couple of folks saw one yesterday. A couple of folks saw one the day before that. That'll be the case today. Computer models aren't really bullish on it. Now, if you do get one of these showers or storms, still could have a decent downpour. There's still enough moisture in the atmosphere to uh, to get squeezed out. But again, they're just going to be kind of scattered about here and there going into the early evening hours right after dinner time, and then those will continue to die down. Still think, though, that we'll have the same situation tomorrow, not only with temperatures, but also with that small chance for a couple of those showers. We still have this northerly flow coming in here, and so that's what's taking these little disturbances and just throwing them down in our direction. But again, it's going to be kind of a uh, kind of a playing the lottery. It's going to be very few and far between. 44 right now in Cut Bank, Montana. So we are starting to see 
a little bit of fall up there in the northern tier of the United States, but that batch of colder air is just going to be staying way up there to the north. Between the high and the low, that keeps us in the northerly flow, keeping a little bit of a disturbance around here. This low is going to try and throw a front down in our direction. Now, it's not going to tap into that 44 degrees by any stretch, but it will bring in slightly drier air for the first of next week. Not a huge, huge change. It's still going to be hot, still going to be sunny like today. 89 degrees at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature, 95, one or two of those showers out there. Again, very few and far between. Ozone Action Day for the metropolitan area going up 35 in toward Austin and not much really changes. Still a couple of showers hanging around here tomorrow, one or two of them, and then mid 90s all the way into next week. We have a very special treat this morning. Mia Montgomery, our latest, newest meteorologist. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Good. Going to be usually working on the weekends, but doing yes. 9 and noon today. Yes, doing 9 and noon today. I've been here this week just getting to know everybody at KSAT, and everyone has been so wonderful, weather authority team included. So I'm just thrilled to be back home. It's fantastic. Oh, yeah, and you're speaking home. You're, you're from around here. Yeah, yes. so I was born in San Antonio. I grew up just down the road in Floresville, graduated from Floresville High School, and then I went up to Texas a and M started my first stint in Bryan College Station, and now I'm back. Here you are. Yeah. So Welcome our third back. Third Aggie on the team with Justin uh, and Spivey Sarah. And a lot of maroon yes. going on around yes. here for all sure. All on the weather team. I see. And yeah. obviously, yes. <laughs> Mark and I didn't get the uh, Royal Blue memo. We did I not. Know, we did we not. Did not. We did yeah. But we'll we'll play Next catch time. up at some point. Yeah. Next time. Uh, very excited you're here. Yes. Thank you. Welcome yeah. home. Thank yes. you. I'm so excited. It's going to be great. Welcome. And, and then we'll see her at 9 a.m. That's so right. Tuned. Look for more Mia coming up. So again, <laughs> Mia, San Antonio, San Antonio. This is Mia. Uh, 651, 73 degrees. And if you're looking for the best babysitter for your child, there's an app for that tomorrow on GMSA. Or to make sure your little one is in good hands when you're not around. We celebrate sunrises around here. Go outside with live cam one more time. We've got a beauty going on right now. It's a perfect start to your Friday. And you're starting your day with GMSA. Coming up here on Good Morning America, we are live across the pond here in Scotland and at Buckingham Palace. We are celebrating and honoring the life and service of Queen Elizabeth II. Coming up, we are going to have more details on the final hours of Queen Elizabeth II's life and what comes next as King Charles III ascends the throne. We'll have that and so much more coming up on Good Morning America. Five minutes till seven. Go ahead and get an update on the situation out there at Loop 410 and Culebra Road, Stephen. Unfortunately, we're not ending on a good note here, guys. We are still waiting for the situation to clear off of 410 at Culebra. We do see that those southbound lanes are completely empty right now, and that's because traffic looks like it's been directed off of to State Highway 151, and that's also where we see a big buildup taking place. Not a good place to be right now, but we do have a few other crashes to mention before we wrap up. 1604 southbound near State Highway 151. This is already causing an issue for drivers out over there, but not the only issue. We have this crash still reported off I-10 westbound, not far from Crossroads Boulevard, and I have to take one last drive down over here to I-35 southbound near Alamo Street, where we do see a buildup taking place in both the north and southbound lanes, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, big mess over there, and uh, Stephen's going to keep us updated throughout the rest of Good Morning America. We've got a couple of uh, clouds hanging around here. It's going to be a beautiful sunrise this morning. Still those few leftover showers well down to the southwest. They will continue to head on down to the south and uh, sort of die down. And we're now up to 76 here in town, mid-60s in parts of the hill country, and it's going to be uh, 95 today, one or two showers out there. Thank you, Mike. Stephen, thank you as well. Thank you, guys, and thank you for joining us. Don't forget to join us again at 9 so you can meet Mia. That's right. Have a good weekend. Let's get through Friday. Good Morning America is coming up next.